content marketing that drives business results is the kind that's tailored to a specific audience's needs. So today, we are talking all about buyer personas and getting to know a number one ideal customer better. Hi, B2B marketers. Welcome back to another episode. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Ayal Wise, and this channel is all about giving you practical tips and strategies that you can actually implement, especially if you're in an industry that celebrates the customer, like marketing, customer success, customer service, etc., where you know you have such a great opportunity to make an impact on the way that companies do business but you're also dealing with really complex buying processes, which makes it really, really important to understand who it is that you're talking to. And you know, there are many things that you can discover about your ideal audience, and there are many ways to discover it. Today, I just wanna highlight a few key questions that you can ask yourself, you know, to either help you get started or improve on what you're already doing, or you know, confirm that you're already doing great. So the number one thing to discover and to think about is who is actually your number one audience. And I'm talking specifically their place in the organization. What is their position? What is their expertise level? Do they have decision-making power? And um, that's going to affect both your um, choices of topics for kind of marketing efforts and also the body of the content. Now, this might be This might be obvious to you, but you got to make sure that you convey that to whoever is writing the content for you if that's not, well, if you're not not writing the content yourself. And so because, for example, right, let's say that you are targeting newbies in the industry and you use a lot of jargon in your content. Well, you know, they're not going to stick around, right? And on the other hand, if you target senior executives and use a lot of, you know, you feature a lot of entry level kind of content, they're not gonna stick around either, right? And I know that in B2B obviously it's complex and this could be like a different person and different position and different decision making power uh, depending on multiple aspects like the company size and obviously in B2B we have multiple people and multiple departments even on Uh, you know, participating in the buying process. So it's complex. But um, do your best to get really clear on who, you know, who's the number one reader of your content. So this way you can write specifically to her. Once you know who they are, think about their goals. Think about the transformation that you are going to help them create. Now, this is twofold. Okay, so first, Think about the transformation that you're going to help create for an entire organization. So, for example, let's say that you have a social listening tool and, you know, that tool that you're marketing helps companies identify and participate in conversations that customers have about them on social media, but, you know, maybe they don't tag them. So otherwise they wouldn't have noticed. Then they would have known about this, these conversations, right? Well, the transformation you can help them create here is that they can move from a company that's totally disconnected from its customers to one that anticipates their needs and prioritizes quality of service, right? Which could lead to an increase in retention and in advocacy instead of a re- of an increase in churn, right? Well, that's one thing. The other thing is a transformation that you're gonna create for that one person who's reading your content. Um, so as Ardat Albi said in the Intelligent Content Conference in 2017, and I'm going to link to that video below, um, you want to take into consideration the professional attributes of your ideal reader. Uh, for example, you know, how long have they, have they been in their career that, you know, has this ideal reader is she out, you know, to climb the ladder, or has she already climbed the ladder and is now looking to leave a legacy? And that can lead to very different types of content and a very different content strategy, right? Well, I'm, I'm gonna leave, like I said, the link to her video, to that video in the description below. 
But make sure you come back here because in the foreseeable future, we will be talking about the psychology behind why you want to take that one person's feelings into consideration, especially in B2B. Once you figure that out, it's time to think of your customer in relation to your company. So, you know, why do they need your type of product? Why your product and not a competitor's product? What's stopping them from buying? And specifically in B2B, who else is on the buying committee? And what do they need from our number one audience in order to convert? Now, pay attention that this asking these questions, these questions does not automatically lead to sales pages and, and you know, and landing pages and all that jazz. I mean, it will definitely help you with that type of content. But it can also help you develop, you know, content that answers these questions in a non-salesy way, like blog posts and eBooks and even case studies. Okay. And so, for example, let's say that you work in, uh, um, you know, a video production company, and your company produces videos for other companies, right? And let's say that your prospects they get it. Okay. They understand the value that video marketing can have, can bring them. Okay. And let's say that your company name is very well recognized in the industry and they totally, the prospects totally trust your company and your team as the best one for this project. Okay. All that is awesome. But Maybe they're not clear on topics. Maybe they cannot decide on topics. Or maybe they cannot figure out which brand story they want to highlight. You know, this actually happened to me where a project got really delayed because the CEO and the marketing team could not agree on topics. They just, they could not agree on topics. And so what you can do in this kind of situation If that happens to you a lot, for example, if you recognize that as a challenge, is that you can start creating blog posts or videos or podcast episodes if you're a video marketing company, then videos and, um, you know, and, and, and share how, share practical tips, practical strategies, how to choose topics or how to tell a brand story or share case studies of, of other customers of yours that have figured it out and got, you know, to enjoy the benefits of your services. You know, don't put it this way, but you know what I mean. And, um, you know, this way, what you do is you start closing the gap between where they are now and what they need to be in order to buy from you. The other thing you want to understand is once they do buy, what is stopping them from optimizing success with your product? So in this example, maybe they just don't know how to market a video and you could develop a tutorial about that. Or if you market a CRM and you notice that many companies struggle with getting salespeople to insert data into the CRM, you could develop a tutorial about that and, you know, on how to get more salespeople on board because the more successful your clients are with your products, the more they're going to buy and the more they're going to recommend your products to friends and colleagues. And once they start with advocacy, they might even be willing to participate in case studies where, like we just discussed, they might, they could go on the record and they can share, you know, how they overcame common challenges that your prospects and other customers are still struggling with, which, you know, once you start doing that, that could help you decrease your sales cycle, which is what happened in my business when I started marketing case studies. Now I go into that deeper in another video, so I'm going to link it up in the description below. And in the meantime, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.